1940 Louisiana hurricane caused record flooding across much of the southern United States in August 1940. The second tropical cyclone and hurricane of the annual hurricane season, it formed from a frontal low off the west coast of Florida on August 3rd. Initially a weak disturbance, it moved generally westward, slowly gaining in intensity. Early on August 4th, the depression attained tropical storm intensity. Ships in the vicinity of the storm reported a much stronger tropical cyclone than initially suggested. After reaching hurricane strength on August 5th south of the Mississippi River Delta, the storm strengthened further into a Category 2 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 100 miles per hour and a minimum barometric pressure of 972 mbar, HPA, 28.71 INHG, at 0600 UTC on August 7th. The hurricane moved ashore near Sabine Pass, Texas, later that day at peak strength. Once inland, the storm executed a sharp curve to the north and quickly weakened, degenerating into a tropical storm on August 8th before dissipating over Arkansas on August 10th. Reports of a potentially destructive hurricane near the United States Gulf Coast forced thousands of residents in low-lying areas to evacuate prior to the storm moving inland. Offshore, the hurricane generated rough seas and a strong storm surge, peaking at 6.4 feet, 1.95 m, on the western edge of Lake Pontchartrain. The anomalously high tides flooded many of Louisiana's outlying islands, inundating resorts. Strong winds caused moderate infrastructural damage, primarily in Texas, though its impact was mainly to communication networks along the U.S. Gulf Coast, which were disrupted by the winds. However, much of the property and crop damage wrought by the hurricane was due to the torrential rainfall it produced in low-lying areas, setting off record floods. Rainfall peaked at 37.5 in 953 mm in Miller Island off Louisiana, making it the wettest tropical cyclone in state history. Nineteen official weather stations in both Texas and Louisiana recorded record-level 24-hour rainfall totals for the month of August as a result of the slow-moving hurricane. Property, livestock, and crops especially cotton, corn, and pecan crops were heavily damaged. Entire ecosystems were also altered by the rainfall. Overall, the storm caused $10.75 million in damages and seven fatalities. Upon reaching hurricane strength off the United States Gulf Coast, hurricane warnings were issued for coastal regions from Lake Charles, Louisiana, to Sabine Pass, Texas, on August 7th. Storm warnings were placed for areas east of Lake Charles to Grand Isle, Louisiana, and areas west of Sabine Pass to Velasco, Texas. Offshore vessels were also warned of the storm in areas between Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, and Galveston, Texas. At the time, the hurricane was forecast to make landfall slightly east of Port Arthur, Texas. In Texas, these warnings were delivered to residents via factory whistles. Evacuation procedures also began as a result of the approaching storm. The spindle top near Beaumont, Texas, and other nearby oil fields were evacuated. Coastal cities near Port Arthur, Texas were also evacuated by State Highway Police. Evacuees took shelter in refitted schools nearby. In the New Orleans, Louisiana area, several thousand residents were evacuated in advance of the storm. On Delacroix Island, Louisiana, 1,000 residents evacuated. Rail and airline operations were halted as a precautionary measure but were later resumed after the storm passed. All storm warnings were ceased by midnight on August 8th. Even before making landfall, the hurricane caused extensive damage in Louisiana. 
due in part to the hurricane's slow speed and close proximity to the state coast. Winds as high as 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per h, brushed the coastline, causing extensive damage. Storm surge pushed coastal waters to near record heights, inundating low-lying areas. Near Morgan City, Louisiana, 19 people went missing. After going on a fishing trip, they were later found marooned at Atchafalaya Basin. The schooner J.W. Cleese was abandoned during the storm, 135 miles, 215 kilometers, south of the Mississippi River Delta, though its crew was also later rescued. Storm surge peaked at 6.4 feet, 1.95 meters, above average in western portions of Lake Pontchartrain. A bridge crossing Thunder Bayou, which extended west of the lake, was washed out by the waves. Similarly, a station at Calcasieu Pass reported a storm surge 4.8 feet, 1.46 meters, high. Conservation officials feared the disturbance would disrupt the seafood and muskrat production. After the storm, it was estimated 75,000 muskrats were killed by the storm's effects. Offshore, Grand Isle was inundated by the strong waves, 